Welcome to our third of an acre home in Western Massachusetts. We're Jim and Jenny. We met five years ago and have been working toward a more resilient lifestyle in our home and in our lives. After studying permaculture around the world, we decided to take these principles to our own small property. We began with an open lot and lots of ideas. Our goal is to work with the natural environment, building and restoring soil, supporting both animals and plants, and growing as much food as we can close to home. Permaculture takes a whole systems approach to the natural environment. In permaculture, the focus is on earth care, people care, and fair share. If we can all spend some time restoring the land and promoting biodiversity, we can create more resilient communities and lives and have fun in the process. We look forward to sharing what we are doing and hope you are able to find some ideas you can bring to your own suburban spaces. Enjoy. Hey guys, a little more time on our hands now. So I figured I'd post some of uh, how we're prepping our garden. It's uh, late March, so not quite a lot of foliage yet, but um, still getting out and prepping the soil. So the soil prep really started in the fall. Uh, so we got a lot of hay and kind of laid it all on the garden beds that we have and um, to kind of protect the beds. And then we have our paths. So now that uh, spring is here, we got a nice delivery of wood chips that uh, People just give away for free because it's, uh, uh, I guess they have to pay to get rid of it. So they'll drop it in the backyard. And uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm basically taking the soil that was in the pathways that we had wood chipped last year and moving that onto the beds. And then gonna put a new layer of wood chips down on the path so that we can uh, walk on it. So I got that started over here. Um, so basically loosened up the soil in the path and then gonna go about kind of raking it onto the beds. Uh, so we don't walk on the beds all here because that's where we put our plantings. We want it well aerated. Um, so we're kind of simulating a raised bed. So this is kind of um, three, four years in the making. So when we first did it, we covered the grass um, in, in tarps. And um, after about a month, all the grass is dead. Then you come through and you kind of start creating your um, garden beds. We got a shipment of... Uh, of uh, manure in and compost when we first started and now we can kind of continue to amend the beds as we go we're considering kind of expanding the beds this year now that we have again nothing but time on our hands so if we do that i'll uh, i'll post another video but for now just kind of going to show what uh what the prep is now we're going to actually plant some spinach uh maybe some beans and peas now because they are really cool weather loving plants and um i'll show you later we also started our seedlings indoors so, um, yeah, gonna show the preparation of the, uh, the beds. Got one row done. Uh, not sure who I'm trying to impress because I was going slightly fast. Uh, and the time lapse, it really doesn't matter. So the um, the other side of this row I had previously done uh, a couple days ago. So it's kind of a good way to like, spend an hour, half hour a day, uh, just kind of coming out here doing a row, doing the next one. Um, once the days get warmer, definitely the activity level increases as we get into early spring. But uh, now I have to do the other side of this bed and that'll uh, complete the final row and then uh, we'll be all set. So I'll also take you over here to what we had done uh, in the fall. Um, so we planted some garlic and that's kind of the first thing to come up here in the spring. Um, so in, uh, in the fall, October time, that's the time to plant garlic. It comes up bright and early, first thing out of the ground. And uh, so we did four rows and uh, you can see them kind of shooting right up out of the ground here. 
and uh, they'll be ready to harvest in probably July. And uh, the garlic we harvested last year made it to about February, so we kind of doubled the size of the patch this year. So we got uh, a row and a half of garlic. We also have a, some garlic in the back. And um, maybe in the next video, I'll give you a tour of the perennial side of the garden, which uh, it's been probably four or five years in the making. But uh, this is our annuals. We'll uh, start getting those planted up in a little bit. So once I get the beds all prepped, I'll, uh, I'll plant some, some seeds. So what I got here is I got some lettuce mix. I got, got some spinach. And uh, I'm probably gonna plant some alfalfa because another way to protect the soil is to cover crop. Uh, we haven't really done it a ton, but um, when you cover crop, it basically just protects the soil. You wanna keep the soil covered at all times so that way it stays moist, you can get the microbial activity going and uh, keep it that way so that it can kind of sustain uh, the soil throughout the, throughout the year. So um, I'll get back to work and I'll post another video soon. So just started prepping the last bed. This is a continuation of the last, um, last bed I prepped. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna dig up a little trench, pull that soil onto the bed, lay down more mulch around the outside, and then uh, start planting. I think I'll plant the spinach back here, some spinach and lettuce, and uh, that'll be successively planted over the course of a couple weeks so that you can kind of stagger it throughout the year so you don't get it all at once. The um, growing season is a lot shorter this early in the year, so things don't grow nearly as fast, so you gotta space them out a bit more early in the spring, and then you can start to space them a little closer together as the days get longer. So uh, yeah, I'll try to show you this one again. All right, so just got through prepping the bed. So I just wanna talk through a little bit some of the concepts. Um, so the first thing I wanna talk about is kind of low till. So what you don't wanna do is really don't wanna break up the soil. So all of the microorganisms, all the fungi, all the, um, all the root matter, we wanna leave in as much as we can. Um, so we actually haven't touched at all the bed from last year. We've just been kind of taking the path and pushing it in. So the path is mainly, uh, mainly soil so it's it's pretty broken down and uh last year that was wood chips so that was the chips that we put in the pathway and the benefit is that now the pathway has the opportunity to break down over this year and then get turned back into the beds so um, the next thing i want to do is i just want to fork the piles and get a little bit of aeration in and it also depends on what you want to plant so if you want to plant carrots you definitely want to make sure there's a lot of if the soil's broken up, that there's a lot of loose, um, loose air in the soil. So definitely you don't want to step on the beds at any time. So everything I do, I'm trying to stay on one side of the path or the other. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go down one side and just put the pitchfork in, put it down, and then turn it slightly. Uh, so I don't want to, I don't want to do anything, but just kind of put the pitchfork in and then lift. That's just going to create a tiny bit of aeration in the soil. Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and create, create lines. Uh, so right now I'm going to plant some spinach because it's early in the year. It's still cool season. I'm going to get some lettuce in. Uh, another thing is kind of garden planning. So we're really planning for the long term. Um, you know, especially if you're thinking about food security you know, planting a couple tomatoes and having a two week harvest is great, but we also wanna make sure we can have food throughout the year. So one of our big staples last year was sweet potatoes. And sweet potatoes are great because they don't take great, great soil. You can plant them in the spring and then they can last throughout the year. So we still have sweet potatoes in our, in our house that we harvested last year, last fall. So we've been having them throughout the winter. And then we also have a lot of squashes. So the thing about 
the squashes and the sweet potatoes is you don't really plant those until it gets warmer. So we're gonna wait to plant those, but we can also plan ahead. So the sweet potatoes you plant is a little, a little seedling early spring and it doesn't really get that big. It's kind of a vine until middle of the year. And then July, it really starts to take off. So what we can do is we can plant in the spring rows of greens or, uh, or beans or, or other types of plants. And then in May, plant the sweet potatoes in the middle of the bed, still be harvesting from the edges of the bed. And then um, once it becomes time for the sweet potatoes to really start to flourish, then we kind of clear room for them. So you can really stagger your planting schedules so you can kind of maximize um, your growing season. Other season extenders that we don't really do, but we could, is we could be planting directly into here if we had uh, poly low tunnels or, or some kind of you know greenhouse style um, or cold boxes to really extend the season. We haven't really done that. So what we're really focusing on the outside is cold hardy plants that can sustain freezing temperatures at this point or that actually like cold temperatures. Uh, so that's what we're going to be planting here. So right now I'll go through, I'll aerate the soil, and then we'll come through and we'll plant uh, plant some spinach around the outside, leaving space in the middle for when we want to plant some of our, our bigger season items. You can do the same thing with tomatoes. So you can be planting greens around the outsides and then plant tomatoes in the middle and then give the tomatoes room over the early part of the year uh, to establish. And then once those are established, remove the ground covers and then that really uh, gives the tomatoes space. So there's a lot of different things. Um, we also don't want to plant the same uh, vegetable in the same spot of the garden more than one year in a row because um, that way the um, kind of diseases and pests can kind of overwinter in the soil and kind of attack the same type of plant. So you want to stay away from same types of families uh, in the same, same areas of the garden. So that's what um, we got going on in March because uh, we can't yet plant squashes, butternut squash, acorn squash. We're not getting those in the ground yet. We don't have the sweet potatoes yet, but we can get kind of our cold greens in. Um, we started our seedlings inside, which I can show you. Um, and we're also prepping the rest of the beds. So we can either plant cover crops or, or just kind of keep the soil covered so that when we get to these, these areas, probably in four to eight weeks, we can be planting the seedlings that we've planted inside directly into here. Um, we may need to pull some weeds uh, at that same time, especially because we pulled the, um, the paths into, we really exposed a lot of seeds. So I would expect some, some weed pressure coming in, but uh, I got nothing but time. So we got the ability to kind of sort through and pick some of those weeds. A, um, you know, a commercial garden probably wouldn't use these types of techniques, but um, on a small scale like this, we're kind of able to handle it. We got my soil worked up a bit and now we got um, we got four rows that we're gonna plant into so we're gonna plant just greens so I'm actually gonna put a little potting mix into these rows we don't have a great have not had great success germinating greens um, so we're gonna put in some, some potting soil see if that helps and uh, plant the seeds cover them up and keep them wet for the next couple weeks and uh, see what happens. Let's see how it goes. Hey guys, uh, so I thought I'd post a video about 
what to do if you don't have much, haven't started anything, and kind of want to give it a go. So we have a part of our garden bed that um, is still grass that we're going to extend. So I want to show you kind of what you can do now if you don't have that many supplies, or if you might just have a shovel in the garage and you say, hey, I kind of want to get a garden started. So what can I do? So kind of look at what we got here. So we kind of already have our existing garden beds here. So they're in a kind of rectangular pattern off the house. So we kind of have rows coming. Uh, what we had previously done is kind of cut it off so that um, we could access the basement door. But what we're gonna do this year is we're gonna actually expand the, expand the beds a little bit. So we're gonna actually expand into this area. So the first thing that you could do uh, is I found some kind of just bamboo stakes that I had lying around. And uh, you kind of want to map out what you want to do. So what we've done is kind of staked where we think we want the rows to go. So this is about where we think we want to end the row. And then I'll show you this way of, we just kind of staked, you know, where we're going to have the row start, where we're going to have it end, and then how we were going to leave a pathway between the, the different beds. So these are really extensions of existing beds. Uh, so really just marking out where, um, where the rows are going to go. So our plan is to kind of expand, you know, this row and this row to really get it out, uh, get it out to here. And so what we are starting with is pretty poor grass. So we don't um, have a great lawn, so we don't have much in terms of turf. But um, you know, we have some areas that are that are grass, other areas that are um, what were crab grass. So you can pull it up and uh, kind of see the soil that's here. So what we want to make sure is that there's no invasive species especially invasive vines, because if you rip up invasive vines, they then spread even more. Um, we're mainly just dealing with crabgrass. So the things that we're going to have to keep an eye on in this area that we're going to create new is weed pressure through seeds. So we're going to expect the soil to have a lot of seeds in it. When we, when we go work it this year, we're going to have to continuously kind of treat that over time. But, uh, you know, you can, you can do this even if you don't have an existing garden. You can just kind of take stakes and uh, go out into the back and say, you know, here's where, where I want my garden to be. So a couple of the, the things that we were keeping in mind is we, um, we have a really good south facing lot. So we kind of have, have tracked the pattern of the sun. The sun kind of starts coming up and is kind of shaded by these trees over here in the morning. And then at about 10, 11 a.m., the sun kind of makes it up over. Now in the winter, the sun angle is a lot lower through the sky, but then in the summer, it really, really starts and gets a lot, a lot of sun throughout the day. So you can see we get a really nice exposure here for our annuals. Um, our perennials right now, you can see this time of year are kind of completely shaded at around one in the afternoon, but um, it's really due to these pines. So once the sun clears these pines, the sun will kind of move back over the perennials in the back. So you want to pick a spot that has really good sun, probably six to eight hours or more. This has pretty much 10, uh, almost 12 hours of sun uh, when we get into the day. So we've kind of pr picked the prime real estate for our, for our backyard to get the sun. Um, when there was nothing here, there was, there was just grass. And I can po post a picture of the kind of the yard before. There was a tree, there was a tree over here. So we're really avoiding that area because there was a lot of really thick tree roots. So that's where we kind of mound and do a lot of um, supply stationing. We've been working on improving the soil here for, for a couple years now. So if you pick a spot, um, you want to just stake it out. So uh, because we have existing beds, I'm just kind of using the spacing that we already had. But you can look up you know, the proper spacing for how big you want your beds, how big you want your rows. You basically want to be able to, um, you want to be able to sit or stand in the rows and be able to reach at least to the midpoint in the, in the gardening bed, because you never want to step on the beds as you're, as you're gardening. So, um, what I'll show you now is basically the areas that we're going to take and extend, but this could work for any any area of grass. Uh, a couple ways you could do it, you could put a tarp over it, let the sun kind of kill that grass over the course of a couple months, but I'm going to do a little bit more labor intensive and just take take a shovel and, uh, and kind of hand remove all of the grass and then kind of work with the soil that we have here. 
we're really going to have to amend it because the soil is going to be pretty poor. Um, but at the very least, we'll get rid of the grass and, uh, and give us kind of a clean, clean area to work with. Um, so I'll show you that now. So I kind of got one, one bed extended and the second one half extended. So what I'm gonna continue to do is, uh, pretty much I got rid of all the root matter, all the things that I didn't really want to come back and um, kind of got the soil the way I needed to be. So you really don't want bare soil. So I'm gonna have to protect this in some way. And there's still a lot of debris and, and kind of grass matter in here. And I also need to kind of take care of the other side of this bed. So this can kind of over time turn into a garden bed Soil is also very poor. It's mainly just dirt. I want to build the organic matter, um, so I'll mend some of the soil and uh, probably plant a cover crop um, to try to get the soil to uh, to grow a little bit uh, microbial activity, and then plant maybe um, beans or peas or something that fixes nitrogen in the soil the first year, probably in in these two beds, and then over time can. Uh, can start to to plant different things and uh, and transplant different types of plants in them over the course of time. Hey guys, uh, working into the evening to try to beat the snow that's coming in tomorrow just to get the beds prepped. Um, so you can see, got the two new beds prepped. Um, so don't get uh, distracted by the, the rest of the garden out there, uh, but this started this morning as grass. So um, we got it set up, we got uh, the soil turned over, we got the, the grass removed. Um, in years past, the uh, the mindset I would have had was, all right, this is perfect. We'll plant right in it, and it'll be great. We'll have a garden. Um, soil health is now the number one thing that it's it's you know we amended some of the soil with some of the the chicken chicken manure, but uh, it's definitely gonna need a lot more work, especially the uh, the weed pressure. There's gonna be a lot of weed seeds that we just uh, mixed up into there that we're gonna need to keep down. Uh, so my guess is this year it'll be a lot of um, kind of maintaining that weeding and then especially kind of at the edges between the wood chips and the soil there's definitely going to be a lot of weeds that come in there um, so that'll just be something we'll have to maintain over the course of the year but uh, we successfully doubled the size of two of our two of our beds so we'll be able to expand our production once we get once we get going um, so hopefully the small encouragement of our expansion uh, kind of shows you what you can do to start from scratch because this could have been an empty empty spot and then you're left with two uh two small little plots and about four hours of work so that's it for now i'll uh pack up and see you guys later